previously. After arriving in the Empyrean of a thousand years ago while chasing Shiroko's will, the adventurer passed Bakal's trial and succeeded in writing the distorted history. But there were still many unanswered questions. Bakal and Hilder. According to Bakal, he'd been a blade, but merely one that was lost and wielded in Hilder's hand. And as if mirroring the predicament of the adventurer that lost their way, the dimensions became turbulent. Due to having been in the distorted dimension for a long time, even Becky was having trouble calculating their coordinates. But then, a voice reverberating with mana echoed. A huge surge of magic accompanied the somewhat familiar voice. Without an inkling of what might await them, the adventurer's gang decided to follow the current. What they arrived at was a building that emanated the same mana. They detected mana that seemed to have a life of its own. Following Becky, who had taken the lead, they headed inside. But a book, which seemed to be both formed of and containing memories, blocked the gang. Questioning why the library's magic was stopping them, they still forged onward. Then, a boy emerged from within the book before them. He introduced himself as the librarian of this place. Saying that he was also a being made from mana, the boy informed them that everything here was created out of mana based on an individual's memories for someone. Elsewhere, Becky stumbled upon a special book. Just as she was about to be thrown out by the librarian, the adventurer joined her again. Here, the librarian tells the adventurer of the reason behind the library's existence. He said that the name of this place was Realm 7, Library of Memories. The memories had been left behind by a mage to be passed on to someone. The current of mana that had appeared in the distorted dimension had also been prepared for one chosen by the mage to help them find these memories once they became worthy. The mana current had appeared before the Varhite because the adventurer was the one who had been chosen. The librarian then pulls out six books for the adventurer. In the distant past, the Dark Elf Kingdom knew of a place where accursed beings, neither living nor dead, were said to dwell. A world visited by the mage before constructing the Library of Memories. The adventurer's gang, guided by the librarian, followed the mage's footsteps. Retracing his actions, they examined the memory pages he left behind. Following the librarian, they dove inside a book. A vivid depiction of hell unfolded before them, so realistic it was hard to believe it was just a recreation of memory. The gang pressed forward, overcoming the denizens of hell. A while after, a figure introducing himself as the Spider Prince appeared. Nicholas seemed to already know the adventurer. As the question as to how a presence in mere memories could already know who they were. Nicholas explained that Moros, the primordial fear, his liege and also the master of hell, had been waiting for the adventurer. He proceeded to test their will. After affirming the adventurer's will, Nicholas handed them a belonging of the mage that Morris had instructed to pass on, then disappeared. The item Nicholas had handed over was the mage's memory page. What's shown on the memory page is the image of an old mage. The mage discovered a boundary that should not exist between life and death, and thus realized the importance of hell 
and its entities to prevent the Lady's interference. Thus, to meet the Master of Hell, he followed the guidance of the necklace and disappeared back in the Hell within a memory. The maid showed himself again, but the recreated memory still would not end. Upon arriving at the destination shown in the memory page, a voice reverberating with omnipotence rumbled out to the adventurer's gang. <laughs> The voice was that of Moros, the primordial fear, the ruler of hell. The adventurer and their companions were discomforted upon reaching this place. This voice that awaited them at the end of the mage's request seemed too real and threateningly deadly. However, the adventurer surmised that something more was waiting for them, and so hardened their resolve to face Moros. Following the converging darkness, they arrived at a huge mansion. Moros then appeared and struck down Shiran and Iris in one blow. What the adventurer was facing was a part of Moros recreated as a memory. Moros commanded the adventurer to prove that they were capable of defending it as the mages had claimed. It which the adventurer had clearly encountered, but did not realize yet. Shiran and Iris, who had been trapped within Moros, were returned. And so the gang were able to read the memory page left behind by Moros. What they saw within the memory was the moment when the mage and Moros met. The mage spoke of the thing they must protect to stop the end of the world and requested Moros to safeguard the borders of the dimensions. The mage persuaded Moros, saying that the one to cause it to start acting of its own accord would soon appear, and that the destruction of the world was something that even Moros did not want to happen. Moros, as a condition for its cooperation, demanded that the one whom the mage spoke of be presented before himself. The adventurer's gang wonder what the thing mentioned in the memory page could be. The entity that, according to the mage, would bring about an apocalypse upon its return after being usurped. Once again, the adventurer dives into the river of the mage's memories to find out what it could be. A spectral land where the dead come to stay. The mage had visited this place before heading on to hell. Powerful ghosts appeared before the adventurer on their path to find the next memory page. The group were hard pressed in their efforts thanks to ghosts with names infamous even in Arad. But then, the keeper of the netherworld, Karon the Gatekeeper, sliced the very space they were in. <laughs> Karon silences the ghosts without even showing himself. He requests the adventurer to come find him so he can confirm the mage's words. Karon also seems to have been waiting for the adventurer and thus leaves another memory page for the adventurer to see. Within it, they can see that the mage had just arrived in the netherworld. Tiredly, he starts talking about the lady again. He repeats the words that Hildur must be stopped as he set off to meet Karon. Hildur, the familiar name, caused the adventurer's gang to guess that the mage had once stayed in Pandemonium. The powerful entity the mage had met, the lady and Hildur? The adventurer hurried on towards Karon in order to find out the truth. Upon arriving at the gates to the netherworld and the red moon, Karon the gatekeeper showed himself. Mentioning his promise to the old mage, he proceeded to see for himself if the adventurer was the one who could protect it. This thing. Before the questioning eyes of the adventurer, Karon summoned the true appearance of the netherworld, invisible to the living. An impenetrable darkness lay just ahead. Deaths witnessed by the adventurer manifested. In the face of the countless deaths they witnessed, Karon inquired about the will and responsibility they bear. The adventurer responded that those deaths were fates chosen by those individuals and that the adventurer's responsibility was simply to remember those deaths and move forward according to their own will. 
the adventurer proved both their firm resolve and the strength to channel it. As the adventurer answered that their will is to discover the truth and find their own path, Charon realized the adventurer is no longer a mere blade at the mercy of others, but one that intended to guide themselves. In response to his promise with the mage, Charon left behind the memory page and disappeared. The page left by Charon, one of some massive fragments that were scattered about when time first began, was in Arad, and the mage sought to use the power of the netherworld to protect it. The mage explained that the time would come when the one who sought to wield themselves as a blade would come to Charon. He claimed that this individual would protect what had been referred to as it all this time, the fragment. Charon, in order to prevent the world's destruction, agreed to fulfill the mage's request. The thing mentioned by the mage was the largest fragment that had been scattered at the dawn of time. The mage intended to borrow the power to protect the fragment from Charon. However, there were still many things that did not make sense, such as stopping Hildur and protecting the fragment from the lady. And the mage's ultimate goal, the adventurer's gang wondered, and once again delved into the memories of the mage. The next view that unfolded from the book was a familiar one, Pandemonium. However, it was much more desolate than the pandemonium they remembered. There, the gang is met with an unfathomable force. It was similar to the energy of Abyss, but felt more raw and powerful than that. The adventurer fought through the images of pandemonians lost to Abyss and searched for the source of the power. Upon arriving at a dead end, the energy was revealed. It appeared as a cocoon made of the energy itself and sought to stop the adventurer resolutely, calling itself the master of infinite energy. It seemed irked that the mage had recreated it as a memory. It was curious as to who the mage had chosen in spite of its own selection. The Fount of Abyss proceeded to test the adventurer's strength. Beset by the violent energy, the adventurer realized that this was the dangerous entity that the mage had mentioned in previous pages. After weathering its powerful energies, the transcendent entity asked the adventurer about the primordial fragment. Primordial fragment? It was a question that kept repeating itself. Portending that its purpose would soon align with that of the mage, the Fount of Abyss vanished. Hildur and the mage, the fragments of the primordial era, and the lady. The adventurer's gang checked the memory pages left by the Fount of Abyss. What remained on the pages was a scene of pandemonium where Hildur and the mage faced each other. There, the old mage and Hildur confirmed each other's purposes. Hildur's purpose was to find the Jew and fulfill the prophecy of the new Genesis. The mage's purpose was to protect the world by hiding the Jew from Hildur and the Lady of Light. Although their intentions were different, they realized they desired the same thing and parted ways. The continuous mentioning of it, the primordial fragment, and Jew, the adventurer realized that all the memories of the mage were recorded around this thing called the Jew. And what Bakal mentioned about he who hid the Jew, along with the legacy of Bakal that Hildur claimed was owned by the mage, the scenery depicted in the next book was once again a familiar one. The Empyrean land was a familiar sight to be seen. It was at the point in time before the machine revolution had taken place. The adventurer headed forth once again to reconfirm the truth that Bakal had known of. Awaiting them was not Bakal, but a memory page left on his empty throne. The adventurer, having successfully dealt with recreations of memories, checked the pages. What appeared in the memory was the old mage from before meeting Bakal and Hildur. The mage asked Bakal to leave behind his power to protect the Jew. 
Bakal, who had already accepted his own death, desired nothing but the singular blade to pierce Hildur. He realized this power would enhance this blade that the mage wished to use to protect the dew. Though their intentions were different, their purposes aligned, which led Bakal to leave behind his legacy as the power to change the future. The adventurer realized that they were moving within the mage's plan already, as they had arrived where they were now using Bakal's legacy, the Varheit. The book that would reveal the truth behind this primordial fragment that would bring about the destruction of the universe, if not protected, lay before them. What met their eyes was an endless desert. Elven figures could be seen before them. This was the place where the elves retreated and hid in after the great blaze. The adventurer realized that this place was Grand Flores of the past, before the creation of the Great Pentacle. At the end of the desert, Seria, who seemed to look different from usual, and the mage were facing each other. Seria, as if devoid of any sense of self, had an empty gaze. Looking at Seria, the mage named her as the Jew in its human form. Right at the moment when the mage tried to put Seria to sleep, the adventurer put themselves between them. The mage, recognizing the adventurer who was blocking him in his memory, revealed more memories with an unfathomable look on his face. The mage had exhausted all his power and thus aged after transforming the desert into a forest. Smiling, Meyer, the legendary archmage, began to tell the adventurer of the truth they were seeking. The Jew that he sacrificed everything to conceal was none other than Seria, the largest fragment and seed that had been born of the primordial god. If Seria is not protected, all dimensions, not just the planet of Arad, will collapse. But now, the great pentacle that had been concealing the dew was failing. Finally, the adventurer realized the truth about the dew. The archmage, guiding them to the next book, begins to speak of the anti and by to the adventurer who is determined to protect Seria, the dew. What the next book contained was a mysterious world enveloped in mist. A beautiful but unique world unlike anywhere they had traversed before. Before them, Archmage Meyer was waiting. Archmage Meyer confirmed the adventurer's will. Realizing the headway made and the firm resolve of the blade he had chosen, <laughs> He now understood that the blade would wield itself, holding its own hilt, and would protect the world of its own will. Meyer acknowledged that the blade was now ready to take action. Thus, he invites the adventurer to come find him in a world whose very existence was a legend, Son. He then handed over Bakal's legacy, Fateway, which would guide them to their destiny, then vanished. 
the last book of memories, and the memories of the place where Meyer's journey began are closed. The adventurer had now seen all the records they needed. The library, having fulfilled its purpose, started collapsing as its arcane energy dispersed. The library which they had arrived at after following Shiroko's will through the distorted dimension and with the Archmage's guidance. And now, Son, the place they must go to to stop the destruction of Arad. What will happen next? This story is a record of the journey of a mage who took the first step forward. Following his footsteps is a tale of one who wields the sword, the story of the forged blade. This is but a few pages of the whole book. Its end will be written by your hand that wields the blade. <laughs>